Hey folks, Larry here. Today we're reacting to AI is ruining the internet by Drew Gooden. I haven't reacted to a solo Drew video since I came back, only the one with Danny. Um, and I really like goofy AI videos, so I'm excited. Let's go. Day in the life of a lazy teenager who makes $21,000 a month using just his phone. The first thing I do when I go oh. on my phone is open YouTube. Then I search for any particular streamer and I screen record their content. Then I head to Creo.ai, select my gameplay, and it puts the whole video together for me. Last month, this page alone made me $14,000. Here's how I make my $1 million every day as a three-year-old yeah. toddler working from home. First, I look for a funny YouTube video, preferably one with a lot of colors and sounds. Then I film my iPad with my phone. Then I upload it to Microsoft's Copilot AI, powered by Bing GPT, and it adds infuriatingly inept Subway Surfers gameplay to the clip. Then I boot my diaper. Then TikTok mails me a check for 200 grand, which which I'm Hi. pretty sure my parents have been using to fund their online gambling addiction. Hey guy. I would watch that. Has anyone else noticed how awesome the internet is lately? I for one find it so exciting that every website now has their own named version of AI that pops up begging you to use it. You got any questions for Gemini? Or maybe Murph? Nendo? How about Grok? You need to grok something? It's okay if you do. AI has become Thank completely you. inescapable. Even if you're going to a website where you're not seeking it out and you don't expect it to be. Like, remember when you could search for something on Google and the only thing they would show you was a bunch of relevant websites and results? Boring. That's not what I'm here for. I think it's much better that now they're using artificial intelligence to tell me to jump off a bridge. Hey, Google, do I need a parachute while skydiving? Nope. I a hate regular the Google backpack search works just as well. Hey, Google, can cockroaches live in your Penis? Of course they can. How do you think they got the name? Wow, I love living in the future. To me, this is the ultimate example of what the AI Ooh. craze is doing to tech companies because for the most part, it's not really doing anything differently than it used to. For a long time now, they've had searches that result in yeah. one highlighted answer. This is kind of the same thing, but just rebranded as AI because that makes it sound smarter than it actually is. But it's not like it's carefully compiling all the most reputable results and running it through their fact-checking algorithm. It's still just aggregating it from one place. And because Google recently spent a bunch of money to buy all of Reddit's data, usually that place is just a random Reddit post from like 10 years ago. This one about how you should put glue on your pizza to get cheese to stick to it was from a user named Fucksmith. This one about how you should- Yeah, like sometimes Reddit searches are like helpful for Google like searches or Reddit results are helpful for Google searches. I've definitely like looked at Reddit comments before, especially for like obscure games and found answers. But like for the featured search result, usually like you need more context, you know, like you need to read like the original post they're replying to or something and like see when it was made. And like there's just not enough information to like make the answer like worth relying on literally at all. It's crazy be eating at least one rock per day is a direct headline from The Onion, perhaps the most famous satire website. If they're not even programming The Onion as information the AI should not consider to be factual, I can't imagine any safeguards were put into place. This is so dangerous Fair. for someone to read this and Fair think they should be eating one small rock every day, when most doctors would tell you to eat a handful of medium rocks at minimum. What little pebble's not gonna do anything? For real though, I do think it's concerning that a website people go to for information and tend to trust for better or for worse is so willing to destroy that trust just because they thought this gimmick would make their stock price go up. And it did. The economy makes sense. I'm gonna celebrate by putting gasoline in my spaghetti. Something I've been kind of interested Yay. in lately is the dead internet theory, which if you dig too much into, comes with some weird baggage, makes some pretty ridiculous claims. So I'm just gonna separate the core idea and make it its own thing. But basically just the idea that as time goes on, the internet is turning into a place where most of the content on it is not only produced and managed by AI, but is also being interacted with by AI in this kind of endless loop that doesn't even involve humans at all. Like if you've gone on Quora at all recently, you've probably noticed questions that have been asked by bots, filled with yeah. answers given by bots. So what was initially created as a place where people could go to get advice from other people has been overrun by AI just talking to itself. Social media- So like, you're not bots though, right? And I'm not a bot. This is authentic content. Highest quality content. I- Reacting. Woo! Um, yay! Yeah. <laughs>
Websites are also going through a similar shift right now, but perhaps none more prevalent than Facebook. In 2019, Facebook deleted over 5 billion accounts for being fake, which far exceeded the number of real human accounts. And that was before all these programs became as widely available as they are now. At this point, yeah. most of Facebook seems to be these giant spam accounts run by bots, posting content created by AI that's being flooded with comments that may or may not have been written by ChatGPT. Today's my birthday, please. My dad still uses is Facebook, but he also like has a page where like honestly he runs content that looks like it could be AI. Um or ran by AI. I maybe my dad is a bot. Oh no. Please please, I like me. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Amen. 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 As soon as one type of photo becomes successful, you'll start seeing a bunch that are almost exactly the same. A grandma who's turning a million years old and just wants to be loved. A comically Aww. long truck full of American flags driving down the wrong side of the highway. Soldiers and dog soldiers with mechanical legs. Today my birthday. No one loves me because I'm poor. Honestly, man, if I had to guess, I think it's actually because of your shoes. Have you tried wearing something That's less insane. terrifying? Today's my birthday. No, no, yon lodines because I'm poor. Again, man, I don't think it's because you're poor. I think it's the shoe. I'm single. <laughs> I need a boyfriend. I'm available. I'm right here for you both. Can you come to me? I will take you out and show you off to everyone and tell them this is my girlfriend. There's something so eerie about scrolling through Facebook Some of this now. could be It's kind of like if you went to an old mall that's on its last legs. The They've only got a few open <laughs> stores left. There's hardly anyone ever walking around. It would be like if that mall tried to trick you into thinking it's still popular by filling itself with talking mannequins. They're just repeating robotic catchphrases like, ah, what a beautiful day at the mall. I'm going to browse Spencer's for novelty goods. And you're like, Maybe who the hell is falling for this? And then you look over at your uncle and he's trying to fuck one of the mannequins. The mannequin has two heads and three arms and your uncle's completely undeterred by it. That's what Facebook is. Now. You'll see the most freakish photos go viral on there, and they're filled with comments from middle-aged dudes like, You may be a little unusual, oh quirky one, but God makes no mistakes. I will pray for you. Okay, now, this has to be AI. AI. So I can show you my penis. And honestly, I don't even know if Facebook wants to put a stop to this. All they're ever going to care about is keeping people on their platform. And if this is what gets them to scroll longer and see more ads, they probably love it. Or at least they'll love it until advertisers start to realize they're overpaying for ad space because none of the impressions they're getting are from real people. So they'll leave to advertise on other websites. And in their place will be ads for like, I don't know, crystals that give you superpowers. Oh, that's already happening? These are those rhombohedron crystals in your pineal gland. We're wow. seeing common people around the world becoming supernatural. That's a real ad I got on Facebook. Maybe Twitter's and doing me. better? Let's see what kind of ads they got. Oh, here we go. An ad for stand-up comedy. Nothing weird about that. Just a regular human doing regular human stuff. Knock, knock. Who's there? Europe. Europe who? No, Europe who? <laughs> oh my god. Good one. Okay. I think that joke only works if you put the emphasis on, no, you're a poo. I don't know if the AI voice really understands that. Knock, knock. Who's there? Europe. You're a poo? No, you're a poo. <laughs> Again, similar Talking. problem as before, but I do love that he's shouting. Oh my knock, God. Knock. There are two big changes that Elon has made to Twitter that have made the website infinitely worse. One, he turned verification into a paid program where if you give them $8 a month, you get increased visibility on your posts, including in replies to other posts. Shortly afterwards, they also added a monetization program so those blue checkmark people could make money off of their tweets. Now, in theory, wow. this is a good thing. I think if a platform is profiting off of your content, it's only fair that you get a percentage of that. The problem is on That's Twitter fair. specifically, most of the content that these accounts produce is just stolen memes and videos or people just saying intentionally divisive shit to get everyone mad and farm engagement. So Elon has taken what he describes as the internet's town square and added a financial incentive to being toxic. So that sucks, but that doesn't really have anything to do with AI. What does have to do with AI is the other version of engagement engagement farming all over Twitter. This like
like mindless chat GPT clutter. Remember, buying a blue check mark puts your tweets at the top of replies. So I guess some people did the math and were like, well, if I just program a bot to comment thousands of replies, <laughs> I can make at least nine or ten dollars, and that's what I like to call a profit. Oh, new movies coming yeah. out with Emma Stone? Cool. I wonder what people are saying about it. Good actor, amazing title. Good one, amazing. As title showing, it will be a blockbuster. The film also stars Jesse Plemons, Willem Dafoe, Margaret Qualley. Yeah, no, I I read all that in the tweet that you're replying to. Stone has starred in many films, including Superbad, Easy A, and La La La. Wow. She's known for her natural charm and husky voice. She's also appeared in Cruella, yeah. The Amazing Spider-Man, The Help. Stone has won many awards, including an Academy Award, a British Academy Film Award, a Golden Globe. Oh my God, why are the top replies just summarizing Wikipedia? Can we I'm maybe so prioritize much. things that are relevant to the conversation? Can we talk about the actual movie? Can we talk about the, the political, political and economic, economic state, state of the, the world, world right, right now? now? No, no, we can't. Because this is what happens when you incentivize people to farm impressions. But I also have a conspiracy theory that some of these accounts are not doing it for profit, but were instead created by Twitter themselves to make it seem like there's more users on their site than there actually are. Because again, who benefits from inflated impression numbers on paid ads? Not users, not the advertisers, only the platform itself. See, some of these accounts don't have check marks or even profile photos for that matter. So there's no financial gain for them to be doing this. They don't seem to be promoting anything. But that hasn't stopped them from copying and pasting AI-generated comments that cut off as soon as it hits the character limit. I'm glad someone is finally shedding light on the importance of mental health awareness. It's amazing wow. how many people are still struggling in silence thinking they're alone in their battles. This is in response to a baseball player breaking his hand? But I think happens. the weirdest and most confusing implementation of Not AI on social media that I've seen is these meta-created Instagram accounts that are either modeled after celebrities but with different names and personalities or just regular AI generated people and they post these stupid photos that look like shit and you can message them and for the life of me I cannot understand what the hell the point of this is at first yeah the Danny Gonzalez video we watched recently like went into that and this video was made before that I think slightly even though they're probably made around the same time like in production um I'm excited to see what you have to say about it because it was really goofy <laughs> I assume maybe they're just using your conversations to train their language model, but I asked one of them if that was the case, and she said no. Although now that I think about it, I'm not so sure I should believe anything they said because I only talked to her for a few minutes and she lied to me multiple times. So first, Liv tells me she's a mother of two, so obviously I asked her how long she was pregnant and if there were any complications during childbirth, and she said 40 weeks and two days and 38 weeks and five days. Her daughter was born naturally, but she had to have a C-section for her son, and I said gross. Then I asked her if her name was short for Olivia, and she he says it's short for Lavana, actually, and asked me if I know anyone with that name. I said I know 100 people named Lavana and 200 people named Olivia, but none of them are wow. friends. Then I asked her what she does for work, and she says she doesn't have a traditional job. So I asked her what her husband does for work, and she says wife, actually. So then I asked her if she adopted or gave birth, and she says they adopted both of their children. And I'm like, didn't you just say you had to have a C-section with one of them? And she said, that's right. So I, like, oh, I get it. You gave birth to them and then adopted them from yourself. And she was like, not quite. We adopted our children through a traditional adoption agency. Then I asked her if she had to have a sperm donor since she's a lesbian and she said, that's right. Then I asked, which one of you gave birth? You or your wife? And she says, my wife gave birth to our son and I gave birth to our daughter. So I was like, oh, so your wife had to have a C-section and she said yes. Then she told me their names were Max and Ava and that Max is nine and Ava is six. And I said, which one did you give birth to? And she said, Ava, who was born via C-section. Got it. So they both had to have C-sections so they could each give birth to one child that they adopted. I asked how they decided who would get yeah. pregnant first and she said, she went first with Ava and then her wife had Max. So I was like, how did you have Ava first if Max is older than her? And she said, Max is actually younger than her. So I said, how old is Max? And she said nine. And I said, how old is Ava? And she said six. And then I asked her what her legal name is. Maybe she's and not she very said, smart. Olivia. So I wouldn't exactly say I trust these things. Now, as pointless as this seems to me though, there's a significantly more popular version of this called Character AI, which apparently yeah. already has 20 million monthly users. It's got a bunch of chatbots in it designed after real people so you can pretend to talk to real people. The company is valued at around $1 billion and is built entirely off the likeness of real human beings, none of whom gave permission and are not being compensated. So there's probably a whole legal can of worms here that needs to be addressed at some point. But uh, I did find out 
that I'm on the website so I can finally wow. live my dream of getting to talk to me. What do you do? I make silly YouTube videos. Oh my oh, God. It has my voice? Off of Toshto, where I just reacted to the internet. Are you married? Nope. No. I have a longtime girlfriend, though. When did they program this? Like six years ago? Are you old enough to be married? Am I old enough to be married? Brother, I just told you I'm 12. Hey, man, school sucks, but make sure you're still in there learning. Well, this is probably the worst piece of technology that's ever existed. I do see one use for it, though. Can you tell me about today's video sponsor? Sure thing, big guy. I will say, I think um, character AI bots, I could be wrong, are made by like people on the website, right? So like, that was just made by a random, probably I assume Drew Gooden fan? I don't know. This portion of the video is brought to you by SoFi, the ultimate finance app helping you bank, borrow, and invest oh. all in one place. And we're also working together to give $10,000 to someone watching this video right oh now. Oh my god. Like me? No, someone else. But more on that oh. in a second. SoFi checking and savings is great because you can earn up to 4.60% APY Whoa. on your savings, which is 10 times the national Wee. average savings rate. That means in just five weeks with direct deposit, right, the money in your SoFi high yield savings account will earn more money than it would in an entire year with a big bank savings account. And you should be making your money make you yeah. money. With SoFi checking Good and savings, you can pay up to two important. days early, oh. pay no to account fees, clear. and you can cash in on up to $300 when you sign up with direct deposit. <laughs> and on top of all that, SoFi and I are giving away $10,000. All you have to do to enter is sign up for a SoFi checking and savings account with my link. That's it. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen right now to enter oh. for a chance to win. Just oh, make sure you're using Florida. my because it's the only way to enter. Thank my you, fault. SoFi, for sponsoring today's video. Does that answer your question? Yeah, pretty much. Great. A couple weeks ago, I was looking for stock photos and I ended up on Adobe stock where I noticed something strange. One of the first results had this very weird artificial look to it. And sure enough, I zoomed in and realized, oh, that's because it's AI. That's why the road looks like that. That's why none of the words are legible. And then I kept scrolling and found more. Again, words spelled wrong if they were even words at all. In this one, the tape just kind of disappears into the headlight of the car. I don't think that's how they usually set that up. Now, if it wasn't bad enough that what's supposed to be a database full of real professional photographs has been completely diluted with unusable garbage. If I did want to license any of these photos, it would cost me $80. Wow. $80 for a photo someone generated by typing police car. This has no value. Actually, this has negative value. You should pay me $80 for making me look at it. The reason people spend money to license photos and videos is because it's something that they don't have the resources to create themselves. Like there's a website I have a subscription to because they have professional stock footage that I would rather pay to be able to use than attempt to make on my own. Tons of YouTubers use this. Tons of production studios use this. This is an entire industry that generative AI is threatening to destroy. But what's so infuriating about AI stock footage is that in order for it to exist, it had to be trained on real stock footage. So this isn't some technological innovation that came along and just does things better. Get with the times, man. No, it's straight up stealing from the people it's now competing against. In the case of Adobe, they outwardly state that if you've uploaded something to their database, they use it to train generative AI. It's not even... Yeah, and like this stuff is so silly because like like it literally just isn't good. Um, I it's really frustrating to me because we're going to exist in a space in a few years or maybe longer where like AI is a lot better, but like it only got better because of all the stuff that it's doing currently, which is a like ruining search results, b like not crediting the folks that they're like actually that are actually doing the work. Um, obviously, I'm a React content producer, right? Like, in a round, not not even a roundabout way, in like an indirect way, this like argument also kind of goes for my content, where like I am making money since I have YouTube partner, and like obviously it's only like a few dollars, but I don't get that many views. But, like, still, um, like there is only so much that like. Can be justified i feel like and like with ai content like it is literally like at the very least the folks that you are literally like using the work to base your models off of i feel like should get like credit and like also should be able like to consent um but yeah anyways let's continue
debatable if they're doing this. It's literally written in their terms of service. Here at Adobe, we're all about empowering artists to help them make money off of their work. Uh, unless, of course, we can make money off your work, in which case we will do that instead. The degradation of the internet as a resource database is something I think everyone should be concerned about. Like, if we already have real photographs of specific situations, what is the point of being like, and this one is kind of the same thing, but the computer made it. Why do we need that? What value is this adding to the world? I think it's bad enough when generative AI is used to create works of fiction because again, it has to steal from actual artists in order to generate anything. But to use it to try to create photorealistic images that end up near the top of search results with no immediate indication that it was artificially engineered, there's something about that that feels wrong to me. I don't understand why we're in such a rush to replace all of the work that humans have done. Something that happened a few months ago that I feel like kind of flew under the radar was when it came out that Netflix used AI to create photographs in a documentary. Not a movie, not a fictional TV oh. show. They created photos of someone that do not exist. At what point does this cross an enormous ethical line? Again, we're not talking about works of fiction here. We're talking about literally rewriting history, creating fake documentation from scratch and not even mentioning, hey, by the way, this isn't real. I guess they just hoped people wouldn't notice that all her fingers are messed up and the gap between the door disappears and not a single object behind her looks like something that exists. All for That's what? Insane. So they could have a photo of her looking happy and carefree? But she's a murderer. How could she do that if she likes to party? Like, why can't you just tell the real story? Why even make a documentary if you need to fake evidence in order to make it compelling? But even more importantly, how is this allowed? This is insane. Sorry, I need to calm down. I should listen to some nice, relaxing oh, no. music. Oh, here we go. Jazz for reading. Perfect. I don't plan on reading, obviously, because I never learned how. But some nice piano music should settle me right down. Wait, why do all these songs sound exactly the same? I... Who are that any happened of to these me. artists? It seems like kind of a weird coincidence that they're all just first name, last name. Their profile photo is the album artwork of one of their EPs. They have no bio and no links to any social media. Most of them didn't start uploading music until this year, and yet they've ended up in these extremely popular playlists created by Spotify themselves? And what's going on with this guy's foot? There's something eerily non-human about these playlists, and some people have theorized that Spotify might be using AI to create a bunch of songs that they can package under random pseudonyms and then curate these into playlists that they push out onto all their users. They have AI songs, they attribute them to people that don't exist, and this allows them to take royalties that would go to musicians and keep them for themselves. I mean, just look at the number of likes on all these. They can advertise these wherever they want all over their app. Now, I want to stress there's these currently no proof so that Spotify's doing this. I'm not saying for a fact that they are, but it's not hard it. to understand understand hypothetically <laughs> why they would. Spotify, like Netflix, is one of those companies that came in and disrupted the industry by offering a deal that seemed too good to be true, because it was. Wait, for a few dollars a month, I can get access to every song ever made or every movie ever made? How could that possibly be profitable for them? The secret is that it isn't profitable and never has been. But as long oh. as you get in early enough to kill all your competition, establish market control, and raise a bunch of money from investors, it doesn't have to be, at least not for a while. But now it's been a while and Spotify is getting a little bit more desperate with each passing year. They tried dumping billions of dollars into exclusive podcasts, but ended up just losing a bunch of money and gave up on that. They tried selling a car accessory, but just ended up losing a bunch of money and gave up on that. Then they lost even we more money when they had to that. refund all the people who bought one just because they got mad. Guys, relax. It was only $90 for a thing that doesn't work. And their new plan now is audiobooks, but I'm sure they'll just lose a bunch of money and give up on that because that's what they do. But Spotify is also in a tricky spot because even if you projected infinite growth and they became the only streaming service in the entire world, they'd still have to give up 70% of their revenue to the artists and record labels whose music is the foundation of their product. And that's where this conspiracy comes in. There's a finite pool of revenue every month that mostly gets re distributed back to artists. Well, what if we had our own artists? What if we were to artificially generate our own music for almost no cost and force feed it to as many people as possible? Well, all of a sudden, we're not making 30% on those streams, we're making 100%. Again, it's just a theory, but for a company that struggled to turn a profit for their entire existence, with a CEO who sees zero ethical concerns with generative AI. I would be surprised if we didn't have already works of that kind on Spotify. It's not outside the realm 
realm of possibility. Either way, it's definitely oh, okay. a bleak thought for artists who are already struggling to make a living from streaming revenue to think the amount. Okay, well, the the like charitable interpretation of what he said is that like artists are using it and putting it on Spotify, and we don't like catch that or whatever. Um, I don't know. Like, I'm joking about it a bit, but like. He's, he's making a convincing argument to me. Um, I definitely think, like, obviously it isn't a fact and it isn't confirmed. But if it were to come out, I wouldn't be, like, shocked. Um, I don't know. I think, like, I used to, because I had this experience recently where, like, I tried to listen to a Spotify playlist. And, like, I'd heard in the past that they were, like, pretty decent. Or at least, like, they existed. And I like mainstream music. Um, and, like, it was just so bad and like it sounded all samey and like i didn't recognize any of the artists and like yeah i don't know i didn't really use playlists for like almost a decade before that so i had like no context or nothing to compare it to i don't know of money that each stream is worth could actually decrease but whether it's because spotify is filling their platform with ai music or because a bunch of random people are there's a good chance this is gonna start happening anyway no human being could ever compete with the volume of output these new tools can generate udio can create an entire song in the time it takes me to grab my guitar off the wall and because of how easy these things are to use i've already seen a bunch of videos pop up telling people how to game the system to make a bunch of money from Spotify. Here's how you can make $10,000 per month uploading AI-generated music to Spotify. Do you know what the best part is? I didn't even make the music myself. Yeah, that sure is awesome. Personally, I find it really hard to understand why people would be excited about this other than just seeing it as a quick way to make some money without having to learn a skill or even really do anything. I don't like what they're doing, but I could at least understand the logic of why they would see value in that. But what I absolutely do not understand is people who are excited about this because they think it's going to improve music. But as I scrolled through the comments on some of these videos, I found so many people like that. <laughs> How ironic. AI music will replace the soulless crappy music that's being released now and it will be better and have more soul here's the music the guy generated in the video by the way definitely oh i love the soul Finally, music with soul. So true, exactly. Before the internet, you pretty much needed to find a record label to publish music. Record companies would not bother with what they would consider non-profitable. With the internet and cheap mixing tools, anyone can publish. And as such, we get a lot of garbage out there. AI music could put a quality floor about what is acceptable. So what, so now we can't even fuck around with FL Studio anymore? It has to be deemed acceptable by a computer? And if record companies just had more control, then music would be good again just for cl okay like okay to compare to react content right just to start because like part of this is like i feel like a relevant criticism of react content um at least i have to like sit here and t talk um i don't know like obviously ai content is like a step or two below maybe i don't know it's below react content but you can see the similarities but i feel like what matters what like makes it so it's like just like genuinely like pretty like ill um is the fact that like you're literally just automating everything there is no like opinion or like individual like ality to it um, you are just making content that like copies other people's content and repackages it but poorly and maybe one day it'll be good but like <laughs> come on like I feel like the individuality and like under like feeling like you have a connection to the person who made it is so important with like content and consuming things and like yeah rant clarification sake i want to know what music they're referring to 99.9% .9 chance they're talking about pop music right because generally when people complain about music that's soulless they're talking about what's on the radio who do you think is curating the music on the radio it's the record labels that you love if making music was more gate kept it would only make things more lazy and generic like we live in an age now where what becomes popular is more democratized than it's ever been sometimes songs just blow up because they're catchy not because sony had a bunch of money to spend on marketing also have you considered listening to something else you know there's other yeah. radio stations right 
You know there's like a billion songs out there, right? You don't need AI to make more songs. You just need to get better at finding good ones. Like, I'm sorry, but if you're consistently consuming media that you don't like in the year 2024, that's a skill issue. Please spend He's one spinning. hour on Google and I promise you, you will find something else after a short break to drink your own pee. Also, I just hate the way people like this describe art. It's easy to get carried away and just start having fun creating random styles of music. But here's the key. You wanna create exactly the type of music that people wanna hear. Hey, be careful. The last thing you wanna do while making music is enjoy making music. That's not the goal here. You should be making songs you think other people will like. That's the key to happiness in every facet of your life. The thing with AI generated music and artwork and videos as this low effort passive income method is that it is going to get so oversaturated, eventually it's not gonna be worth it for anybody. Here's how you can yeah. make $20,000 a month selling mid journey photographs on Etsy. Okay, but all of the people watching this are gonna go make the same exact art using the same exact prompts and flood Etsy with millions of the same crappy piece of art and no one's gonna buy any of it. It doesn't matter how much you Crazy. increase the supply if the demand stays the same. I managed to find one guy who was actually honest about the results in one of these videos. He spent a month doing this and sold one product. And that's probably best case scenario. So you've got more and more people wow. discovering this new side hustle and they're gonna try it out for a bit, maybe make like $4 and then give up because it's not worth but it. But the collateral damage from that is they're helping oversaturate the market for everyone, including actual artists whose work was indirectly stolen in order to make the stuff that you're making to compete with the artist. The whole thing sucks, but weirdly, as this technology continues to evolve, I'm almost getting more optimistic. It will never deliver on the self-sufficiency some people seem to think it will. Like, I actually think AI images have gotten worse in the past year. Almost every single piece of AI art that I see has the same style to it, that weird glossy look that's instantly recognizable. It's still getting a lot of the same details wrong. It still doesn't understand what to do with text. And there's no reason to believe that all of that's suddenly gonna change anytime soon, especially as it continues to train on other AI generated images and just eats itself. Okay, so this is how I draw a hand. Got it. Oh, wait, no, this is how I draw a hand? <laughs> okay. Oh, no, this is how I draw a hand. I keep the more information out. you give me, the smarter I get. An AI-generated video is an abomination. It has all the same issues as AI images, but adds them to every individual frame, all of which seem to act independently of each other. There are no rules they're following. There's no sense of physics. What is Body parts thing? shift and morph, sometimes disappearing altogether. I don't like watching solid this. objects can pass through other solid objects at any time, resulting in this hellish dreamscape that's impossible to take seriously. It looks and I so think weird. that people talking it up are delusional. I decided to put some famous album covers into Luma Labs AI. Here are the results. Fire emoji. The street looks so realistic. Followed when I saw this. Oh man, this is gonna be good. <sighs> Who's that guy? Why did they all stop and run into each other? What are the cars doing back there? This is mine. Dope. This one is more fluid. You know, it's funny you say that. I actually think they both look like shit. This one's actually pretty good though. I like how it just created two new guys and then covered up the original ones. Man, if that's not a metaphor for what's going on here, I don't know what is. One thing that has been lacking with AI generated video up to now has been emotional performance from our oh, gen no. AI characters. But I think we're starting to cross that boundary. Hi, Hollywood. I think I found your next big star. Dream Machine from Luma AI is just five days old and it's already turning memes into video. Here's 10 epic examples. Wow, that's so what? epic. What important technology this is and useful too. I love when her head snaps around and the front of her body becomes the back of her body, just like real life. Wait, what? They turned a video of Elon Musk smoking into a video of Elon Musk smoking? Okay, now that's a game changer. If someone could just turn my videos into videos, I'd be set for life. What's that? They already have? Road work ahead. Oh. Uh, yeah, I sure hope it does. <laughs> What? Hey, can
Can you never fucking do that ever again, please? The magic behind Kling lies in its diffusion transformer architecture. This technology helps it translate rich textual prompts into vivid, realistic scenes. Realistic? The steering wheel's in the middle of the dashboard, there's three windshield wipers, the car is driving the wrong way, and no one is reacting to it. That car is driving on the sidewalk. Sure, I guess it's <laughs> interesting that a computer can create a video from just one sentence, but then what? What's the practical application for this? Are you making a movie about the wacky antics of a troublemaking cat? You couldn't put this shit in a movie. Even if you manage to smooth out all of the logical errors, there's still no style to it. It's not visually interesting. If you wanted this scene to have a narrative to it, you would need to generate so many individual shots from different angles and hope that they all match up, which they won't. The lighting's gonna be different in every shot. The car's gonna randomly change colors because there's no logical consistency with AI. It's just regret regurgitating information even if it has to contradict itself in order to do so. I honestly think the distance between this and mm. this is so much shorter than the distance between this and something so lifelike people will confuse it for actual footage. Sure, maybe your 75-year-old grandpa will fall in love with the four-boobed lady he saw on Facebook, but most people aren't going to fall for this. Especially younger generations as they grow up with these things being so prevalent, they're naturally going to train their eyes to be able to spot the differences. When people ask what the point of any of this is, is the dorks who defend it all tend to say the same thing. These are just tools to help anyone create art. Yeah, I want to push back on that a little bit. I am wholeheartedly for the increased accessibility of creative tools that help you take matters into your own hands. You want to make a short film? The camera on your cell phone is better than 90% of the cameras in human history. Want to learn how to edit? There's thousands of free YouTube videos that'll show you how. You want to make music? You can buy a professional audio interface, workspace, and a handful of plugins made by some of the most talented artists in the world for less money than it would cost to rent a recording studio for one day. And all of that is fucking awesome. I feel so lucky to live at a time where you can essentially make whatever you want without having to cross the insurmountable barriers that people did in the past. You don't need anyone's permission. You don't need an exorbitant amount of money. You can just make stuff and put it on the internet and with a little bit of luck people see it. And there's so many tools along the way that help you streamline the process of getting from an idea to a finished product. But at a certain point, if the tool is just doing everything for you, you are not an artist. You just described what you wanted to make and asked a computer to make it for you. You're also not learning anything this way. Part of what makes art special is that it's difficult to make, even with all the tools right in front of you. It takes practice, it takes skill, and every time you do it, you expand on that skill. Every song you hear, this every movie fair. you watch is the result of thousands of hours of trial and error. You can fail a million times and use that experience to finally succeed. Making a video using generative AI does not teach you anything about making videos. It's not like you could type 500 Sora prompts and then take everything you've learned to go shoot a movie. There's zero correlation there. Generative AI is only about the end product, but it won't teach you anything about the process it would take to get there. And I think what these tech people will never understand is that finally figuring something out that you've been obsessing over, turning a blank Word document into multiple pages of something you're proud of is the fun part. That's what's rewarding about yeah. making stuff is figuring figuring it out on your own or with a group of people and getting to share in that feeling. Can AI tools help you figure out things faster? Sure, but it's not gonna feel as rewarding. I understand how tempting a shortcut can be, especially when you go online and you see all these other people doing cool things and you're like, man, I'll never be that talented. It would take me like 10 years to learn how to make music like that. Okay, that's fine. What's the rush? Just start right now. Don't worry about how long it's gonna take. Just Take the first step. How are you ever gonna do something for 10 years if you won't even do it for one day? Maybe you won't be good at something the first time you do it. You probably won't. But every time you improve, that's something that you can feel proud of. That's something that you did. Call me stubborn, but I would rather make something shitty on my own than watch a computer make something good. Write a funny script for the end of a YouTube video. All right, folks, we've reached the end of this roller coaster ride of a video. If you survived Ow. my terrible jokes and questionable dance moves, you deserve a medal. Seriously, someone get this audience of metal. But hey, before you click away to watch cat videos, no judgment, I get it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. You wouldn't want to miss out on more chaotic content like this, would you? And hey, if you have any suggestions for what ridiculousness I should attempt next, drop them in the comments below. I promise to consider them while I'm eating my fifth burrito tonight. Thanks for sticking around, you legends. Until next time, stay awesome, stay weird, and remember, life should be read. Take seriously. Catch you on the flip side. That was good. I... <laughs>
my dog started moving towards the end of that video, so I kept like trying to mute my mic so you wouldn't like get distracted by hearing him. Um, hopefully I, I succeeded. So yeah, that that video was funny. I really like like goofy AI videos is what I'm finding out. I think like there a constant comparison I made throughout the video is like AI content to React content, right? And like I definitely think, like, as someone who does React content, and especially, like, pretty, like, re like I rarely edit my videos, right? Um, it is fairly low effort. I try to, like, add stuff to the videos and add my own commentary and, like, actively react and engage with it. Like, there's only so much. Um, I feel like... I, like, I completely understand why people might not like React videos and stuff, but, like, I feel like for AI videos, there's, like an even lower like bar for the content it is like so like bad and i'm not convinced that it won't get better obviously i said some multiple arguments earlier in the video that like talked about that mentioned like yeah it probably will get better um but it's gonna take time and like the stuff that's better probably won't be as widely accessible as the stuff that's bad um, and like Drew said, um, there's only like, I don't think Drew specifically said this, but there's only like so many, so much attention you can get for your content if it's original, um, or if it's AI, right? Um, and so AI content crowds that out. Um, algorithms are not that good. It looks, it seems like at least so far at shifting out quality AI content or quality human created content from bad AI content. And that's a problem because it just makes the internet feel less real and also bad and worse and lowers the quality for no reason. The, this stuff like matters to me um, because I like the internet. I spend time on it. I have fun consuming content. Um, so yeah, and like stuff has been getting harder to find. And I feel thankful because I'm like, able to navigate technology and like good at it and as a result I think I find some pretty good content to consume but not everyone can do that and there's so much like low quality content and there's low quality content made by humans too but like at least it's made by someone <laughs> all right let's read some comments AI more like AI don't want to watch this <laughs> that's so funny it's a high quality AI joke Somebody on Twitter said AI made me believe in the concept of human soul by making things without one. And it's been stuck in my head forever. That's like so weird. I... I don't know. There's like... I don't know. It's so... Annoying. Um, the fact that AI had to leech results from Reddit is already an example of people migrating away from algorithms. The whole reason people added Reddit at the end of their Google searches in the first place was so that they'd get results from an actual human instead of ad recommendations. Yeah, that was helpful. And obviously, like, sometimes Reddit comments are filled with that, like, people who are probably being paid, um, to write comments on the internet that, like, are positive of a product. But, like, it feels like there's a better percentage. Um and easier to, like, at least get one real comment. I think the worst thing I've seen as an AI search result was in response to the search and feeling home. Uh, yeah. Kill a homeless person as they won't be missed. That's insane. Yeah, I feel like, um, the issue is sometimes there are folks who are in a really bad state of mind and are unable to differentiate like, good advice from bad advice, and who aren't able to differentiate AI content from real content, real people, like, AI people from real people, and, like, all of this can contribute to someone making a really bad decision, um, regardless of what it is. And that's not good. I'm not a fan of that. It's bad. Crazy, I know. Um, yeah, wow, I'm, like, so impassioned for real. But, um... What's really pissing me off is how much of Google image search results are AI-generated. Recently, I was looking for a reference of a Japanese police uniform. 
is I wanted my art to be as accurate as possible. How to dodge dozens of false images of something I wasn't familiar with in the first place. This is so dangerous for people trying to do actual research. Yeah, that makes sense. I haven't really thought about that, even though I use Google search image search results. Um, I'm sure stuff I've looked up has been AI generated and I wasn't aware because I wasn't trying to think like I wasn't thinking about it. Um, or trying to filter it. Uh, this seems like helpful advice. Interesting. But yeah. Um I brought oh I did like this video. Cool. I really like this video. I felt like it talked about like important things in a relevant way that was interesting to listen to. And it was fun to react to it. Um Thank you so much for watching, folks. I hope you have a great rest of your day, night, evening, whatever. I say this all the time because I genuinely believe it. Very real. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm a little extra. Anyways, bye. Hey, folks. Thank you for watching the video. Remember to like it, follow on YouTube, subscribe on Twitch, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much.